blue backdrop. It's, it's a, a little. little put the, I was gonna say it's a little washed out in the corner there, but it's it cuts it uh gives it a little texture though. You're good. What about I like that? It. I like it. See, you see that? That's cool. Not only is he a is a master actor, he's also a gaffer apparently. You see this? <laughs> <laughs> I try, man. I'm trying to I'm trying to take over the business. All right, you know. I love the Dr. Cornell West fro you got right now, son. You look like a wise man right now. Hey, hey man. I, I haven't I haven't had my hair cut in uh since the pandemic started, bro. Wow, son. Is it just how you've been feeling? No, yeah, well, that and then you know the barber shops are shut down, and then yeah. I think my my last haircut is is uh is right right when I went to Sundance. Was the last time I had my haircut. Wow, wow son, it's been yeah. long I've ever since, huh? Since, huh? It, it's longer than this though, cause I, I just got out the shower, but right. it's it's like mad long, man. I got you. It kind of frizzed up on you. Oh man, no, it looks great though, man. Thanks, man. I'm trying to, you know. I, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get there. No, join teams red, man. You might as well join teams red, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Sun, Sun, Sundance just was last weekend, right? The, right. The, yeah. So Sunday this year, Sundance was like last weekend, and then um, uh, yeah, they, and I and I know they had some uh really good movies. Yeah. You know, I haven't seen any. I didn't. I didn't do the whole you know get the tickets and watch them virtually because I was doing some other stuff, but uh. Word. You know, yeah, I, saw a, Judas. I know Judas and the Black Messiah. I know it got awesome reviews there. It, it um, yeah, premiered. Yeah, there. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I saw I'm it like three o'clock in the morning. Did you watch it? Yeah, I saw it like three o'clock this morning. As soon as it was on, I loved it, man. It's it's, okay. it's automatically one of my favorite movies. He's one of the Fred Hampton's one of my favorite people in history. He was only twenty one years, years old. Like he was 21, 20 years old, killing the game. Like. Like I'm 36 exactly. years old and still can have not stood up as strong as he did, right? You know, right. And, trying to figure that out, right? Yeah, no, yeah. And, and you know, know that at 20 years old, right? At 20 years old, mm -hmm. and and a lot of people don't know about you know that story, Fred Hampton, which is a right. travesty. But I, hopefully, this movie will make people go, you know, this is this is we man, mm -hmm. and the you know I don't want to give it away. It's it's history. It happened, but you know right. what I mean. It's yeah, crazy. man. I haven't seen it. Right. It's so it's so beautiful that uh, that it, it's possible me making movies. I mean, you know, I just graduated and it's so used. I'm so used to feeling like, you know, a lot of the extremities of the black American experiences taboo. It's conspiracy. It's, you know, it's mm -hmm. it, it. I I never even thought as a filmmaker how possible it was to make a movie like that right now. You know, even our our um, our queen, uh, Ava DuVernay, she just did, uh, you know, When They See Us, right? And I just think when it's, they see it's it, yeah. um, not, not as much. I mean, it's, it's a horror story, you know, in so many instances. But I also just think that it's, uh, I, I just think it's so um, brave of them and so integral you know some movies are just you know that it's not just a thing that's out there for people to watch sometimes it's out there and it just makes the world a little bit better when when it's out there right so uh um, absolutely yeah so it's cool man I'm, I'm yeah check it out let me know what you think when you see it man i, I loved it absolutely yeah i gotta i gotta check that one out daniel him and lakeith daniel kalia and, and, and lakeith oh, they're like two of my favorite favorite actors man so yeah man yeah. mesmerizing performances mesmerizing yeah i'm sure I'm sure those guys never miss, man. Yeah. You yeah. guys never miss. <laughs> my man. Well, cool. Well, I want to introduce you, man. You know, we got get the going real quick, man. You know, my man, L. Will. Uh, so this is uh, the new Filmosophy, guys. It's your boy, Trey Hill. Thank you so much for another episode. Now, today, we're going to be able to go into Netflix's Malcolm and Marie. Now, it's an awesome drama, a rom romantic drama. And it was um, written and directed by Sam Livingston. And we have the pleasure today of having with us Mr. Will Dalton. That's right. Mr. Actor Extraordinaire. I got the privilege of working with him on Loving. I'm just going through, if you guys can't tell, I'm just going through all of my top uh, loving contacts. Yeah. Uh, the, the loving fam is, is you can see, man, it, that was a, a heck of a couple of months, man. And I, uh, my, one of my first teamers, all of my first teamers for, for, you know, Sharon, she's acted with me, Alano, 
Uh, he gives me advice on my scripts and stuff. He's, he's always giving me uh, insider tips, you know. Uh, you know, Ruth, even Ruth and Joel, or at least during the production, it, it was just such a family environment. And I just, I right. I'll, I'll never forget how, like, the bonds that we created then. And the fact that they've lasted up to this point and we're able to sit here and talk about our, our craft, man, the thing that we love and, and the movies that touch us. I'm really looking forward to this, Will. Really looking forward to this. Hey, hey man, I'm, me too. Th thank you for having me, for one. You know, we... We uh we've been trying to get something get something together for a while and mm. it's it's gonna happen. Yeah, man. <laughs> yes, yes, man. So much to catch up on uh with, with our films. I know that even you've um you've directed a couple of shorts yourself, right? Just keeping busy, man. I, yeah, man. Yes. And and, yes. I, and Sergio, that was awesome on Netflix. We saw you on on Sergio. Thank um, you for that. Yeah, man. And I know that my uh the first short film that i had done for my graphic novel right when you were going to come up on that you had gotten the call for sergio you know gotten the uh, call we, for sergio right yeah and, and we know how that goes it's all love because then or immediately after he told me that he ended up were uh giving me uh the uh, the amazing actor that, that ended up coming up onto uh to Federation Temple, and I don't know if you guys can see it from this angle. They'll see it in other angles, but we did we did a decent job, man. Rob Rob did an incredible job acting, you know. For, or, for and, Rob uh, and Douglas, was, yeah, man. Rob Douglas held it down, man. He was so man for him to have seen read the script like three days before. He did a great great job, and it was a fun time, man. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We, we, I think I might have a feature cooking soon, and I already. Yeah, man, I'm looking forward to a fun future, man. Plenty of more stuff for us Look, to do. I, I'm taking the call from my agent now. Hold on. Uh, uh, <laughs> Trey, Trey, ha, Trey, Trey has a feature now. Uh, he's coming. So, uh, yeah, block, block me off for that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, Denzel, no, no, Denzel, no. No, Trey. <laughs> you can't you can't get this one, man. You can't get this one. <laughs> I'm busy. I'm busy. <laughs> salute, man. Salute. No, I'm <clears throat> we're gonna knock out a couple of chores and then we'll really get into the nitty-gritty. Did you know that that uh Will Greenfield, the UPM on Loving? I uh, listen. I knew you were gonna I bring saw it up. that. I knew we I saw that. I was yeah, I was watching the you know the because they did if you if you haven't seen the movie they did a um they did like the old Hollywood montage like the the, the you know the credits in the beginning like that old you know nineteen forties fifty you know that whole black and white thing but at the end you know when they brought the uh, the producers right we we knew Zendaya we knew John David Washington all you know Katia uh, Washington they all were involved as producers but then I saw Will Greenfield and it was like oh. Woo. My guy will be yes. Yeah, so I was, yes, <laughs> man. Yes, man. So I was cool. proud. I was proud. Right? Yeah, yeah right. man. He's out there. He, him and Sam. I guess they've been out there working on Euphoria because you know him and Tanya. They moved to Atlanta. Okay. Right around when me and Robin had moved here, so we had stayed in contact with each other. And he moved out to L.A. He's going to be out there for a couple of years walk, working on Euphoria. But I was so excited to see his name. Right, like, as soon as the credits started rolling, I just I started texting him. I was like, oh, man. I was like, I see you, man, doing your thing. And he, and he hit me up, and we just, right, we, he told me all sorts of fun insider stuff, man. I could tell you uh, when we're done, but it was. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, but, but to hear how it all came together, man, and Sam had an awesome idea. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and, uh, get, uh, Zendaya and to get John behind it. And man, like, yeah, it was, I, I love the story. It's, so we're, we're, we're going to dig into it. We just got to do a couple of chores. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. All right. <laughs> so the first thing that I ask everyone all the time and, uh, the, don't feel like there's a right or wrong answer to this. Don't, don't feel like there's, there's any pressure. Okay. <laughs> what is your philosophy? Oh man, um, like what? Do, like how do I approach it, or or like mm -hmm. just what's my? Yeah, man. What, like if I'm working or just watching. See, I I think here, and I'm going to because I always forget to pin, and that brings me into a worse issue in post. So let me make sure I'm doing that first and foremost. All right, cool. 
that's not an issue I can fix in post. All right. So, <laughs> we're good now. <laughs> All right. But, no. So, uh, yeah. And I think that the reason why I call this the new philosophy is because it is me and all of my friends just kind of recreating those moments after we go to the theater with our friends or our family we watch this movie just completely pushes our wig back and then we just talk about it for hours right you know afterwards. Yeah, right. you know, uh, and it's <clears throat> those movies that touch us that that those emotions that they evoke those thoughts that they make us think Right. That mm -hmm. I think that I think that is a sort of philosophy. Right. So. Yeah. So, you know, whether it's after you watch Star Wars and you feel like you can defeat yeah. the dark side or whether it's after watching, you know, Leo and Kate argue on Revolutionary Road or, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you know, wh whatever that that thing is, what whatever that spark that comes out of you, what what comes to mind what when you think about that, that spark, that thought? Yeah, it, it, it's exactly that. Like, I know for a fact there have been movies, e even before I was an actor, you mm -hmm. know, even I can remember movies as a little kid that moved me, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I didn't know why at the time, because you, you don't know, but it was like you watch something and maybe the story, you just can't get it out of your mind. Right. You know what I mean? You can't, you constantly are thinking about it, mm -hmm. like a decision that was made in the film and you go, man, well, why did they do that? Or, you know, what would have happened if, and those things are like my philosophy. Like if I watch a film, I really want to, if it, if it, if it, especially now being in the business, mm -hmm. like I watch films, I try to watch them more uh, just as a fan, like just a movie person and not, you know, in the whole technical aspect of being an actor and all the DP, all of this stuff. But, right. but even then there's a philosophy that comes with that because as an actor, as a, you know, the director and things of that nature, you watch it and you go, Oh man, that blew my mind. Like, I didn't even know you could do that. Like that story, it didn't even, you know, stories that just touch me and like make me feel an emotion, mm -hmm. whether it be anger, mm -hmm. happiness, sad, you know, anything, right. if it can spark the emotion for me, that's my philosophy. Those are the movies that resonate with me that just, you know, that story is just so, I can't stop thinking about the story itself. Mm. Those films. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. It makes me think about one of my writing professors. It, he might have the most to do with my writing process, my screenplay writing process. And I remember mm. he, he really sparked my joy for watching movies again. Because, you know, when you get into the industry, some you, you just start seeing it zeros and ones like the Matrix, right? Like you're not enjoying exactly. it anymore, right? And, and, exactly. And, and he told me, he told all of us, you watch the you watch movies as a, as a movie lover first, you know, when you first watch it. And then those other times you watch it, you watch it as, you know, a, a filmmaker. And, right. and I think that you can get, not only can you still get that, uh, that jovial experience, you know, that innocent experience mm -hmm. that everybody else gets, but also as an artist, we, uh, you, it kind of, you know how you can kind of, um, be working on an empty gas tank sometimes when you, you get, get yeah. in the machine, you know, but you gotta, you can keep it full with the books you read and the, and the, and the life you live and the experiences, the things that you allow to, to captivate you and, and movies can still do that when you, when you, when you, uh, when you look at it for, like that, man. So that's, that's really cool, man. I love that. Yeah. That's interesting. You said that too. I just, just to piggyback what you said like that, that's what it is for me too. Like the, um, when your tank is a little empty, Mm -hmm. and, right. and and maybe you don't have motivation right, right. You, you're in between working or you know whatever and it's just like you see a film that just sparks your creative juices or just your storytelling or you, even even from different actors that that you watch and it's like you know it's that <laughs> yes. moment that's like oh like, that's why i love it. that's why yeah. i love doing it you, you know what i mean right so yeah, yeah. That's beautiful, man. I love it. All right, so I I have a show board back here. Now, okay. we're yeah. actually in the A, and we do another one of these episodes. I know originally when, you know, I told him about this 
podcast, you know, like a year ago when I was just thinking yeah. about it. I was like, man, we got to I was like, we got to do um, something like life, you know, like, and I still think we're going to do that with Eddie and Martin just because it's such a <laughs> layer of comedy. I love that so much. I think we will have a fun conversation with that. But <clears throat> but, um, you know, but Malcolm and Marie s- moved you so much and you reached out to me. You're like, yo, let's do it. You're like, yeah, let's do this. I had to. Yes, I man. had to. I'm super stoked yeah. about it. Right. Yeah, man, it's, you know, just it, like you said, it, it, it moved, it, something, it, something happened. And it was just like, whoa. Right. Yeah, man. Whoa. So, this is. Yeah, man. I'm going to, uh, well, when you are actually in Atlanta, we we'll, you can actually sign the show board. But for now, I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to update the show board with your name in the TV, <laughs> I mean, in, the, um, in the movie. And in the meantime, can you let us know, what is the last VHS that you still own or that you can remember that you popped in? VHS. Uh, yeah, you you remember. I know you know that VHS. <laughs> I, I actually own a lot of them. Uh, nice, nice. As a matter of fact, I have some. I'm looking at, at my, my office, little, uh, little office thing, and I have some. Post it up. Uh, I I see I see bad boys. I see Friday. I see the craft. I think that's my wife's. Uh, I see Final Destination. Pretty Woman. That's definitely my wife's VHS. Uh, <laughs> so, so, you know you know what's crazy about Final Destination. You know um yeah. You remember when like the, it was the tree with the um, the the truck with the log. And, and, yeah. then, and like some like so you know how normally normally every time I drive and I see that tree or that log with the truck, I go to the right every single time. Every right. single time. <laughs> so, hey, but like, like, I wanna say maybe like a few months ago, a few months ago, it was like uh I think somebody was moving or maybe it was like a Sears or something. They had all these big appliances up there. All right. And I was riding around that joint for like a good strong 15 minutes right behind it. For a good strong 15 minutes, just not thinking nothing. I wasn't in a hurry. I was like, slow your roll, player. Sometimes in life, you gotta slow your roll. Yeah. Don't, don't be in a hurry. Man, I did, <laughs> I did. I took, I went into the right. In this moment, I took off into the right. Snap, snap, boom, 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 boom. Bruh, 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 bruh. That's why Final Destin. That's why movies like Final Destination is out here, bro. bro. That's, they <laughs> letting us know, bro. They saving lives out here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey yo. yo, oh man, that's crazy that it actually snapped. Son, I don't know what it was, man. I don't know <laughs> what it was. And then what else did you say, Malcolm and Marie? Man, you said bad boys. The first one, yeah. Michael Bay, Will Power. Bad Boys, yeah, the Michael Bay is right here. I got it. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's, it's right there. I'm going to go grab it in a minute so y'all can see it. That's <laughs> dope. That's dope. What's crazy is, have you seen Have you seen the third one? Yeah, yeah. I was so pleasantly surprised. I, I thought it was going to be a cast, like just a cast grab, but I really, I enjoyed that movie, you know? Yeah, man. They, they did it well, you know, and, and I, I remember Will saying like, uh, and him and Martin, they 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 weren't gonna just jump to it unless the script was was well done. And uh, even even thinking about that, like even with Eddie and the coming to America too, yeah, you know, he was like, I'm not gonna and, unless it's right. And I, you right. know, of course, we haven't seen it, but um, mm-hmm. but yeah, when yeah. you revisit a franchise like that, man, I like you said, I was very pleasantly surprised about that mm-hmm. about yeah. uh, Bad Boys Three. Yeah, man. It's so cool you brought up coming to America too. Ed, Eddie Eddie Murphy is a magician. I ever I never wanna I never wanna say he can't do anything. I I know for a while he started coming out with a lot of uh what is it? I got a lot of sequels that got uh iffy reviews. But yeah. but man, I um I have all the faith in the world in him for some reason with this one, man. Absolutely. I, I, at first, when I first heard it, like a year or two ago, I think it when it was buzzing, I was like, no, no, don't do it. Like don't right. The, don't remake like Golden Child or yeah, yeah. Trading Places. Come don't yeah. don't do it. Right. I was I was really worried, but I I have faith in him, man. Like all all the all the uh, players that are a part of it, uh, mm-hmm. I. 
I, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm yeah, I try. I trust him more, especially knowing how important that movie is to the culture. I think you know he's right. He right. wouldn't do it unless they were ready. So right, right. And I was wondering, and you know, what just with the PC culture and just with comedy these days, just how hard it is. You know, they had they were they were they had those horrible African accents. You know, oh, and, <laughs> and making, they, you know they, they had, had like this, this you know, know the, the old, old Jewish, Jewish guy, and like I was like, oh man, like I was worried, like maybe. Uh, it, this will be too tame. Like I, I was like, I hope if he's gonna do it, that he, he goes. They do he's it. Eddie. That he does Eddie. He goes yeah. all the way in, you know, because yeah. I love him for it, you know. Yeah, and, and you're right about that, man. It's right, different right. for times, so right, right. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Man. You know, with COVID, this is a uh, this has been an interesting question. But what's the last movie you saw in the theater? <laughs> Uh, man, oh, uh, I, I went I, while I was filming Sergio. Uh, we were I was overseas, and I I saw um, I, uh, what, what was it? I forget the name of the movie. I saw two. It was like uh, it was the movie about the boy who was raised by the pack the the wolves. Uh, and yeah. Was it like what is, what is it called? The the boy the like who inherits? I forget. Him. Is it like, like he something like that? Or something? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Oh man! I and then he, it was like you know back in the day, and, and it was not. It was like a they'd spoken like a native language with subtitles and like. Right. So I watched that, and then I watched a uh, and <laughs> uh, Predators, the the new the last Predator. They did. That's uh, that's the two films I watched. The, the last films I watched the theater while I was while I was working. <laughs> sure, I feel you. Yeah, man. It's a different. I guess it's a different lifestyle when you're actually working. You know, it's not like you. Uh, you went out and, you know, you had been waiting for this movie, you know, for yeah. for forever. This was more an experience, you know, as you were working, you were out. You had a couple of hours to go out, a couple of Some fun Some free movies. time. Yeah. Yeah, my, uh, me and uh, a guy, Dylan Hunt, uh, did, uh, from Walking, uh, Fear the Walking Dead. Yeah. We, uh, we that, that was our thing, man. We we just took all we left the hotel. It's like, yo, what are you doing? Catch right. a movie. <laughs> so, <laughs> go get some food, catch a movie, man. What's up? So that, that's it, man. But yeah, you're right. When you're working, because a lot of the films, especially in the foreign market, mm -hmm. they have the movies like we have in the U.S., but sometimes they may be just a little delayed at the time. You know, they may not have them uh, at, at the theater. But luckily, we found a uh, like a, a good uh, complex, like a mall with like a real like a regal type. But it was nice. Oh, cool. and, uh, and we 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 got we got in and and uh, watch films and, and Jordan and. And when we yeah. got to Bangkok, they had a really nice theater in Bangkok. So we, you know, went and watched there. So it's just cool. Word. Yeah, man. Yeah, I've been to Bangkok before. That's awesome. But I haven't been to Jordan. So how how long were you guys at each place or or you, I guess, specifically? Yes, yeah, like like a month and a half each, I think, something like that. Right, um, right. And then and then I, I, I had like a I could have elected to take another like three weeks to just be in Bangkok before filming but right. I, I actually they let me fly home me and Gad and myself we flew back home yeah and uh and then my family came back with me mm -hmm. uh to Bangkok they they spent like 10 days with me and uh because I, I I wasn't it was like a vacation pretty much I wasn't working yet <laughs> it's just like okay well, you guys come hang out we'll do some stuff so yeah that's cool man but that's, that's awesome. yeah that was cool man so you were out there for for a little while then they must have Cut your role then significantly, right? What say what say that like again? In the no, no. final cut, because if you were out there that long, then I'm thinking that you're they must have cut down your role then a whole bunch then, right? Well, what they did, yeah, myself and Gad, what happened was um that so the script went, it was like a two-way script, mm -hmm. right? They could cut it one way or they could cut it another okay. way. I got right. You. And we we kind of knew that. And it was it's okay, you know, we still made the we, we're still in the movie, it's fine. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, but some some of our scenes did get trimmed. Okay. A lot of the um, a lot of the like stuff that we shot in the in the whole like it, it, in Amman specifically. Mm -hmm. A lot of those things outside, uh, like uh, convoy scenes, and things, and that may have just been for time issues and, and continuity type of things because you were dealing with so many people. Right, you know, right, it had right. nothing to do with us, but it was just like it was so many moving parts. It was like, oh, you might can get rid of that part. At the expense of, you know, maybe, you know, a couple 
scenes, but it, you know, it's it's all good. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, man. Now nah, that's beautiful. Now you did a beautiful job. I've I've never seen you be anything but just fully de dedicated into. I see the character. You know, I I, I love right. watching awesome. you Thank perform, you, man. man. I love watching you perform every time. Thank you, man. Thank you. And I was bald headed. <laughs> all right. Yeah, man. It's a completely different look. You know. They cut all of it. Uh, just a, just a quick segue on on to that one. I, so I knew I was playing a soldier. You know, it's real people. It's a, it's a biography, right, a biopic. Right. And so I saw the guy, and I said, "Well, eventually I'm gonna have to shave it." So right before I left, mm -hmm. I went to my barber. And I said, "Well, look." I said, "Cut it." I said, "You know, I don't know." I said, "Just cut it, buzz it a little bit, so it was a little dark." Mm -hmm. Took the facial hair off. I got to Jordan. I, I wasn't, you know, I didn't go immediately to work. So I had like, you know, a week. I didn't have to do anything. So the first day I had to go into work, go into the trailer. Martin is making, you know, he's doing the makeup, buzzing me a little bit. And we were both talking about it. He's like, I don't know how long, you know, he's like, maybe we'll keep it a little bit. I said, yeah, it's cool. Mm -hmm. He said, have you ever been bald before? I said, no, never been bald before. But I mean, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. He buzzed it. He said, okay. So he got on the, on the, on the horn and he calls over to Greg. Greg comes over the director, Greg Barker. And he said, uh, you know, we need a look on Will really quickly before we put him in. So Greg comes in and I'm sitting beside Anna Dionis and uh, she's getting her makeup. And, yeah. and she's like, she's like, no, I like it. I, I think it's cool. And I said, it's not too short. She's like, no, it's, it looks good. So I said, okay. So Greg comes in, the door opens. I look down. He comes in the door. He says nothing. He looks at Martine. He looks at me and goes, like, just take it all off. <laughs> he says, <laughs> <laughs> so he he comes up behind me, puts his hands on my shoulders, and he goes, uh, he goes, you know, I, I, and I said, you don't have to say anything, man. I, I yeah. it, I'm here. That's what I'm here for. So right, right, we right. snatched it off, and um, I never been bald headed when I when I walked out because I was in uniform, mm -hmm. right, and like all the extras and everybody they were outside. So when I walk out of the out of the trailer, mm -hmm. and I got my uniform on, like they all kind of looked at me like. And I said, oh, this works. Yeah, yeah. you're like, oh, I can dig this. I can dig this. Yeah, man. I can, I can dig the ball. So I, I kept the ball head for a while after I came back. I did. Nice, man. That's dope, man. Yeah, I was I was bald before this. It doesn't, I, it was like when I was like 19 years old. But yeah. That's man. what you say. Yeah. <laughs> man, so. You had the Jordan. Yeah, I had the Jordan, man. They used to call me Can't Get Right because, you know, I was dark skinned with the ears. So, you, you from life, from the movie Life. They used to life. Call me Bo Keen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bo Keen Bo Woodbine. Woodbine. Yeah, yeah, they used to call me Bo Keen back in the day, bro. Yeah, yeah. man. The dead presidents, all of, Jason's lyric, all of that, man. They used to tear my tail up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, can't get right. I'm not going to unsee that now. I'm not going to unsee that. <laughs> lucky you, lucky you. Nah, man. So that's cool. So did you do a lot of research on the, <clears throat> excuse me, on the real life soldier that you played or you were just basically based off, going strictly off the script? So, yeah. So what... What what Greg told me and uh, and uh, um, the script was written by Craig Borton. Uh, you know he with with a uh, Dallas Buyers Club. They won the you know. Yeah. So he wrote it and and um and but Greg was like, listen, he had already done the documentary. He this was his baby. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's been following this story forever. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he said, look, I'm your character, Andre. You, I don't want you to go too far into researching him from anything that's out there now. Because he's speaking with hindsight, it's twenty, you know, it's twenty twenty vision. Mm -hmm. So anything he says now in interviews or in, even in my documentary, I don't want you to be influenced by those decisions because he hadn't made the decisions right. yet. What you are playing, yeah. so it's kind of like revision, revisionist history that we kind of do to our own history, kind of thing. Right. Yeah. You, you know, if you revisit the history, then, you know, I might come in with a preconceived notion like, oh, mm. he said this, but he, you know, at the time he was doing it, he didn't think about, he wasn't thinking about that. Right. 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 So I if it. I go in with that thought, it's, that's a false note. You know right. what I mean? It's like, you don't want to hit any false notes. And so he just said, well, look, let's just, let's paint a, 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 a an empty, a blank canvas, empty slate. So I'll give you some, a little backstory of where he's from. You know, he's from he's from New York. He's from Brooklyn. His dad's a uh, uh, police captain or chief or whatever. He did. He never made the force. Mm -hmm. And he that was something that ate away at him. 
So he was like, use that motivation because he became a firefighter in New York, right, at the 9-11. But, you know, that's eating at him because he never, he wanted to be the cop. He wanted to be that guy that goes in and, you know, the same or whatever, like his dad. So that's how we approached it. And that's why he was so kind of apprehensive about, it was like a big moment for him because it was like now he can show and prove to himself and like, oh, my dad, he might be watching watching this like it, nobody else is coming to the rescue let me go in right. you know what I mean? yeah, so, yeah so we just play, we played it that way and, and you know that's that's what we got blessings man you killed it boss uh, yeah hey, thanks man it's still on netflix right go check it out go watch sergio man go watch sergio girl watch loving Yes. Oh, yeah, they're, they're both both on Netflix right now. So uh, yeah. Oh, really? Loving's on Netflix. Loving's on Netflix. Oh, Loving's on Netflix. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That. yeah, yeah. Man. <laughs> yeah man. That's it, man. I love that. Yeah. Um. So cool. So, <clears throat> last uh question is the most impossible question ever. What's your favorite movie? Oh, that's not impossible. White men can't jump. Hey, I love that, man. It's not impossible. The classic. I love that. White men can't jump, brother. I like I, that is my when people when people know that and I tell them because they look at me like, wait a minute, you just like this dramatic actor. It's like you guys don't know I come from the side of comedy as well. So it's like, right. you know, that movie because I, I play ball too. So right. that movie spoke to me. It moved me because everything they were doing in that movie, like the hustling on the on the streets with the at the games at the park. That's yeah, what we used to do. That's, that's what, what we used to do. That was it, man. You know, that was that was it. You know. The, the, the little white dude, yeah. And then the summer, the white boy come in from out of town. You're like, who this dude? It's like right, and he right. end up busting your ass, and you're like, oh, now I got to team up with Cuz. Yeah, <laughs> nah, nah, just nah, don't let him stand in that three point spot, bro. It's going in, bro. It's going in. <laughs> Yo, do you know how many times I've had, I've had, uh, you know, yeah, somebody jumping like this? No. <laughs> yeah, the, the the white boy. You know how many games we won with the white boy, like, word, like word. you know, and in my home, and, I, and I'm saying that out of love. It's no racist thing, but you know yeah, what I'm saying. It's like you go to, you know, you go to the, these hood courts, mm-hmm. you go to these hood parts, and they're like, man, he ain't. And I'm yeah, like, right, exactly. and we, we run him off the court. Mm-hmm. Right, right. He he hit that shot, and he back up and look at you like this, backing up. Oh yeah, automatic too, <laughs> automatic. <laughs> oh man, that's dope. Nah, I love that you picked that. I, it's one, that's definitely one of my favorite films. Uh, Wesley and Woody are just one of they, they are just top notch. What Woody? Somebody needs to get him an award ASAP. Like, yeah, uh, thank you know, you. He, somebody needs to give him something. And and uh, and Wesley, I I'm really excited. And speaking of Eddie, I'm glad that they're uh, getting some wind underneath each other again. I just finished watching him in a Rizzo movie. Wesley was just in this. Rhythm oh, cut, uh, Cutthroat City, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. We we got it on the queue to watch. So yeah, right. I enjoyed it. I really, I and I really enjoyed Wesley's performance. Okay. Um, man, you know he that those are just two titans and Spike Lee. The uh, that's a whole filmosophy episode in itself. I love that. Yeah, that's look that that goes without <laughs> saying, man. That's that's like my bucket list of uh, of um, people to work with. Mm. It, it, you know, Spike just from everything he's done not even just what he's done for like the, the black culture and things of that nature but i mean when because people say that and they'll go and this and this will be an interesting topic when we talk about malcolm and marie but people will, you know it's like this, the black director the writer and i don't think people give him enough credit just as a filmmaker right that's it just you know without putting him in that box and it's interesting because they use him in the in the movie but without putting him in that box and going oh he's you know he's a black film but yeah, he, I mean, yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. But as a filmmaker, you know, he's worked with some of the best people, mm-hmm. you know, from from Denzel to, to Lawrence to to uh, Ruby D to uh, 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 Ed Norton, you know, all these people, yes. and Chadwick and 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 Delroy Lindo and yes. and all of those guys that don't get the flowers, you know, Bill Nunn and and, and Giancarlo Esposito and all of those guys. Right. So it's like when you watch one of his films, you're gonna get a master class of the craft because he don't play like he his guys are coming in yeah. John Turturro, you know what I mean Danny Ayo yeah. all of these yeah right and you hear you know the, you know those to me because when you think when you say black directors yes he definitely is but I, I think of him also in terms of just those 
those New York filmmaker connoisseurs like the Scorsese's, you know, that are just, they're just, they're scientists. They have studied this thing. They can spit out like six movies in 30 seconds and, and every frame has like 60 different references. Like, you know, everything is done on purpose. You know, it's, it's, He's a oh like Spike is a scientist man like I, 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 yes yeah. what, what, did, what did Denzel say in Training Day he's surgical with this bitch he's surgical <laughs> man surgical man he's he surgical is, man he is <laughs> and I still honestly think I I think his magnum opus is ahead of him to be honest I don't I I know I know it's you know it's hard, it's crazy to put out such a, a lofty prediction with with you know do the right thing and all, all the go, uh, school days all the oh uh, yeah you know white men can't jump all the awesome things he's done x you know but I yeah, I, no, think, no. I think he's got got a couple more hits uh, in it because he's just learned so much yeah yeah, right? he's. I, I, I think that he's got a couple hits in his future, but I know that's a perfect segue because we're going right into the movie and <clears throat> and this is uh, uh, Malcolm and Marie. This is a, a love story, a love hate story. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this this couple uh, is out in L.A. and this is a filmmaker, a black filmmaker, Malcolm, who has just. Uh, I can feel we can us being filmmakers and being in this industry, we yeah. have low key been thinking about this night all our lives, right? Where, where we that yeah. premiere of our magnum opus, the, the the or the first film that people give us our flowers for, right? You know, absolutely, like the, the absolutely. Malcolm, this is Malcolm's night. He he put a movie out there. It's based very much that we'll find out on uh, on Marie and her, uh, you know, being a black woman dealing with addiction, which is mm -hmm. uh, very meaty in itself. Talking about a, a yeah. black man needing, t you know, the 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 raw soul life of a woman, you know, of a, of this of this black woman, not only her support but literally her life in order to like kind of life. you know to put them out there, right? And and this argument, I feel I'm so glad that you picked this movie, but because one, just us, me being a filmmaker, these are discussions and arguments and states of mind that I will humbly say I've been in, you know, that I've had with my spouse and that I've had to deal with with in myself. Right. You know, just yep. the and it opens up. I love the the realness of all the, the the interactions, and he's playing the James Brown movie. I mean, a song, and he's screaming it. And you know when you when you rip and you fill in the song, and you know all the words, but you can't get them out right. You know, you so like I'm gonna. You know, it plays, man. Right. You know, like it's funny just that opening. Like you said, like, and I think maybe, maybe it, it spoke to me in so many reasons why it spoke to me. Mm -hmm. um, but, but then it was because you, you know, I'm in this industry right. and it is because you go through these situations and it is because you've had these type of, you know, verbals, uh, you know, people don't, <laughs> so, so it was kind of like, wow, like I'm watching like the first 20 minutes and I can't. I can't turn away. I'm like, this, yes, man. this is so. And the one of the reasons I, I, I really liked it, one, I, I got to give Sam Levinson his, his flowers. I know a lot of people are. And another reason I wanted to do it because I, I, I was reading reviews and not just reviews from like columns. You know, I'm, I'm you know, how the, the Internet is, 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 is crazy and. Yeah. So they'll they yeah. review a movie before the movie even, before they people even left the theater, they tweet them about it. People, people have, yeah. have, 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 have watched, watched it. it. I, I swear, swear they, they haven't, haven't even watched, watched, watched it. it. Mm -hmm. They haven't even watched it. And, they, and, what, and what I found interesting was the co-signing of some of the negativity that people found in, in the film. Right. And I'm like, but did you watch it? Because right. if you watched it, I know people were like, I'm, I was triggered. And they will get into that part, but... Mm -hmm. The just the, that opening shot, and I heard Sam talking about it coming in, how they dollied it back, and then it was like a rotating him walking around. I thought that was just so brilliant, just from a technical aspect, uh, aspect from a um, visual, right. the color of it, the lines of it, 
you know, it was, it was, to me, it was just beautiful. Like it was an ode to like old Hollywood, man. Right. Exactly. And, yeah. a, and, a, and I'm glad and an actor's dream. Right. Exactly. It's such a performance driven, uh, character driven story. And I love how you said of all the things of the Meissen scene, did you also set color? Cause it, it's grayscale, but they, but he used color so masterfully in it. Right. And I, I, I love that you that you said that. And yeah, I, I and that was some of what, you know, what, what with me and what Will were talking about. But I love so much that Sam was able to tap into because Spike Lee was even saying it because regardless of what the color is, this is a human experience. And he nailed it. He, he nailed it. I don't I don't yeah. you, you know, uh, you know, John. Uh, and Zendaya, of course, they were there. You know, we believed them and in, in their whole interaction. But for me, being an aspiring black filmmaker, and if you if you ask me, or you know, hold on, James Cameron told me to not say aspiring. Me as a film, be black a, be filmmaker, a filmmaker, right? You know what I'm saying? You dig me as a filmmaker, right? <clears throat> and and to know what. I, uh, you know, just what the struggle is. I, I, I was trying to refrain from calling it a struggle because I embrace the process. I enjoy figuring it out. I'm so content. Me too. Well, you know, I'm, I'm so, I'm so happy with where I'm at in my career and with my right. collaborators. And I just, I, I, it, it wasn't fake. I felt it. I just felt it for, from my side. I re, like I, I could picture that night, and I, I can picture yeah. those arguments. And yeah, man. And and you can put yourself in it, right? Mm -hmm. Right. You can right. you can put yourself in it, and, and that's perfect. You said it because that's what. And I know people say, "Well, you guys are in the business; it's going to be good to you guys." But it was like, well, just from a human emotion. Mm -hmm. No matter what it is, whether you was in this business or you you sold a company or or whatever the right. case was, the cel uh, celebratory, mm -hmm. and you're feeling it, and then this argument happens because of this situation, <laughs> then it's like, oh, that was so human. It wasn't about them being black. It wasn't about them being white or Chinese or whatever race or culture. Right. That listen, love and anger mm -hmm. translate across any cultural color barrier ever right remember it didn't eve tell us love is blind takes over yeah. your mind yeah it don't have no color man <laughs> it's no color in that emotion has no color you can be sad doesn't matter who it is you can be happy doesn't matter these things cut across all those the cultural the color lines mm -hmm. and that's what i found interesting because one of the reasons i really wanted to talk about it is you know i wanted to advocate for the film yeah. Right. I have no stake in the movie other than we know Will, who was one of the producers. And he, you know, he was one of our producers. And and, uh, and I didn't know that until I watched it. But but I wanted to advocate for it because I, I started to see a, um, a trend online. Right. And it was a trend of kind of knocking the movie. Right. Yeah. Right. Because it was it. it people were like, oh, that's not black love. And I'm like, is it not? It, it, it it's they never said it was this a mushy love story right right and right, even right, in right. the the subtitle it says what does it say this is not a love story it's a story about love hmm, it did yeah huh right you know i never i i don't know any any relationship that hasn't had a ups and downs right. you know what i mean right and i think and, i think yeah. that's a, a a false note from the people who are saying those things they kind of bash it it's like that was the that's probably one of the realest, rawest films I've seen in a while. Yeah. And two of the best performances I've seen in a while, you know? Yeah. To yeah. capture the realism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it felt like such an exposed nerve, that 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 house. <laughs> uh, you know, it felt like such an exposed nerve. And I think that when we when we're talking about this colorless thing, I remember us talking about, you know us making movies and them again not being black movies them just being movies and i think that, film. that sam livingston you know oh how about we we not i don't want to be the black role i don't want the i don't want to be the black sidekick i don't want to be the magic negro i want to be the <laughs> the um the straight man you know i want to be the 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 the, the, the detective i want to be a full 
uh, um, full person, right? Full yes. realized uh, human being, right? You know, and and here we are. It's a very like like Leonardo DiCaprio could have played that role, you know. Uh, oh, uh, right. And you know, uh, you know, and what is it a. Uh, what is it? Antonio Banderas could have played the role. Antonio Banderas, you know, who, whoever could have, you know, and, and it would have been great, you know. I mean, Sue freaking um, Jennifer Lawrence. I mean, it could have been, you know, a, a, a gay relationship. It, it that was that was, uh, you. Uh, you know, that was two strong personalities. With yes. the, and we all and and this isn't about whether or not they're gonna make it through the relationship or not. This was a night. This was a night where he forgot to thank her, and 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 that that's what you you. I can see that night looking just like that. I could, you know, I could like my hubris, <laughs> like me and my hubris, you know, maybe a younger version of me, any or maybe somebody that's not my wife because she is not having that. She would have walked up on the yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah. Um, excuse me. Uh... <laughs> for sure. For sure. <laughs> You might get smacked up a couple times. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yo, like I would have felt the eyes on me, right? No, but, but. You, I could definitely see an alternate dimension, right? Or th- this this night, because you could see at the very beginning. I felt in the whole, the first 15, 20 minutes before she says um, it won't be a productive night. I felt it. I, w- I was like, this is going to be a horror story. There's going to be blood. Like even <laughs> I was like, she's too too. You kept put. You know what is funny because it's so. It, <laughs> It, it's so apropos too, because it's like it's really just like relationships, right? It's like right. that's you know the, the your woman, man, whoever they you know the level head will say, okay, you had a little bit of drink. I have some things I want to say, but if I say them, mm-hmm. if I say them, right, right, you don't want to go there because right. I'm feeling it. I, yeah, man. It, this is the reason. Yeah. But I got 16 reasons right behind the reason <laughs> I'm, I'm mad. So go ahead if you want to. Right, right. And see, we, we, you know, and I put myself in that position because, look, I'm, you know, I'm married and I can have that, you know, and, and I might want to push a little bit. I might want to say, but what, but what, because I'm oblivious. I don't, and I thought he was kind of oblivious to it, to a degree. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He, he was such on a high. It right. was, he had so many things to think about that night. Right. I right. get it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I get it. You, you excited, da, 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 da. but then I get her side because it's like, wait a minute. You, she, what did she say? You even thanks your damn gaffer. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, man. I mean, because they were both right. You know? I, They're both I, right. I think just as innocent as him forgetting her is, is as, uh, you know, sort of insidious, maybe kind of mean hearted. Because yeah. if you, because he, if he is that person if you are in that, uh, have allowed yourself in that state of success or in that place where you are getting your flowers, if uh, and I can only theorize, but I just feel like if you are in that position and you forget, you know, if you forget about yeah. how it got you there, you know, I I think yeah. that. It's it's easy when you're on the outside in, you know, it's because because who's to say when the lights is on and, you know, yeah, everybody's clapping and everybody's looking yeah. at you. But, man, I just I just think that if if you haven't been able to kind of ground yourself because the same thing, I feel like, you know, almost the same thing that grounds you in that moment is the same thing that grounds you when you're writing the script and when you're when you're going through the production exactly. days, right? You know, it should it should right. be that same source that that grounds you, whether, if that's your woman, right? You know, that that kind of brings you back, and then uh, there's it, it has to come out. It's, it almost you know because that's what grounds it, 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 you. Right? It's, it's like on an autopilot. Like you got to be like, oh, and let, let me get this out of the way right there. You, right, you know, right, yes, yeah. first and foremost, <laughs> right? Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah but my baby, right here, you know, so. Right. It, you know that that's and I and I can see both of the the struggles in that, mm. you know, especially he's been drinking and and, and hell he might have been sober when he forgot, who yeah. knows, right? Yeah, right? But that's what makes the movie so good because you can paint it, mm. however you want to paint it before you even exactly. get to the house. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think yeah. they did a really masterful job of that because I know some Jeff told me this a, a, a while back, uh, Jeff Nichols, and yeah. 
and I asked him about right because I, I could see Jeff making a film like this. You know, what I mean, he's right. he's a, yes. he's a master of this. Yeah. And I said, uh, I said, Jeff, how do you, um, what's your key to write? Because I, I I can't write dialogue. I'm not a really good dialogue writer. It's it's a beast, you, right? You you know that you know the struggle. And he says to me, he says what are you what are you trying to say or what are the characters trying to say i said well this is what the characters will be saying but i don't know how to say it he said then don't right he said the actions of it you let the audience write the write that for you but the emotions and and things that are on screen Mm -hmm. you know with his brush the camera that's what's going to come out so you can you know, even in acting class, when they tell you you can say three things and say them a different way, and they and they all mean three different things, but it's the same exact thing you're saying. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. Like, hey, man, nice shoes. I really like your shoes. Yeah, nice shoes. I don't really like your shoes. I don't like you. You know, what right. I mean? it's, just, it's just this whole battle. <laughs> so that's what what I took. From. You you know what I mean? And I I think that's what what Jeff was saying. And I think and I thought about Jeff when I watched it because I said, yo. It is wordy. It's a wordy film. Mm-hmm. It almost had to be to keep your attention because it's two people, right? right? And, and it is an argument. So right. they're going to, I thought I thought it worked beautifully. But those moments when they were just still and, and it was nothing said, I was like, oh my God. Like, right. show don't tell. The, every, you can, it's a whole different, it's a whole story on the face mm-hmm. and in the actions. And, uh, and, I, and, and I thought about that. I said, you know, Sam, Everybody involved they did a really great job of of telling a story without like because I, I read somebody said it was preachy. I was like, oh, I don't think it was preachy. The, you know, the monologues. If you, I get it, because people may not be used to that, they might need some action or something. But yeah. it was but very it was stage like, play esque. It was stage play. It was like it was like theater. It was like you know watching Chekhov or you know or or, or uh, uh, you know. Uh, um, uh, Charles Fences. Fuller or, or uh, August Wilson or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Exactly. But but I thought it was an ode to all of that. I yeah. thought he was. It was like a ode to old Hollywood, ode to ode to the stage, ode to people like August Wilson, ode, ode to Raising of the Sun, ode to so many people. Spike Lee with the camera movements and things. And I thought, you know, I just think they 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 deserve a lot of praise for what they did, especially. Yeah, man. The time that they did it in. Yes, and that was what was Will was telling me about too. There was one of the first films, uh, like out of Cali, that was getting filmed during COVID, and there was just a lot of things that were that hadn't been invented yet that they are <laughs> literally figuring out on the fly, man. Kudos to them. And what's crazy is is Sam Livingston. Uh, I actually PA'd with his little brother Jack up in out in DC too. So I'm like, it's a, it's crazy how like only a couple of degrees away. I'm glad that you forced me to do this episode because I I probably wouldn't have put it together until like a date night right. with my wife or something one random night. But <clears throat> but man, yeah, he uh, again so so well written the dialogue and everything. And when M- Marie just going back real quick, when Marie says uh, it won't be a productive if the if we bring it up so let's not talk about it i i love that line so much because we've we have me and her have both said it in, in our relationship right and then also i think of when i uh when I, we don't know better to say that a younger couple or you know a younger person when you don't know to say that like you like that and, and when you're young someone saying that you don't realize just how big of a red flag that was like that is yeah. a cold red warning danger real robinson danger like, don't <laughs> don't push the button don't, the, the don't it's, bl- it's blinking and it yeah, but, I'm gonna push right. it. And, but he's he's drunk, man, and he's feeling himself. So so it, it goes down. Now, let's see. Uh, she and she also says that he's not capable of de-escalating a situation. And I thought that was so real, too, because I uh, because, again, in, in, in younger relationships or, you know, with somebody who hasn't processed their emotions quite well all together yet right that that is when you know when you're dating somebody or that you're with somebody that i cannot be honest right now 
I have to figure out, you know, when you're like, I got to figure out like that moment when it's like, you know, is it, is when it, you can see it. You're right, right, right. You know, you know, and, and, but, and, and respecting that. You, you, so in another movie, maybe if he wasn't drunk or if he wasn't feeling himself, he would have had the cachet to kind of, all right, I get that. We're going to circle back around on this, you know, later right. on. But then we wouldn't have had such an awesome movie to talk about. Right? Then we wouldn't have had it. And, and, and I think that, the, you know, the, the, I think there are arguments. I don't think it ever, I think he even said this is the biggest argument we've ever had. But but again, they put it out there. We argue. This is, we argue. Yeah. We don't agree yeah. on everything. Yeah. You know, he they said that. And, um, but like you said, younger person. And I've learned at my older age, too. You know, I, I, I don't like to argue. I really don't. Yeah. I will, you know, don't get me wrong. I'll, I'll get in there, but right. I, I do kind of try to want to de-escalate. Right. Bef- like you said, just take that moment. Okay. I hear what you're saying. Maybe, maybe we shouldn't talk about this right, right now. Let's just, we'll revisit right. it. And-, and it's also, and I think the reason why both of them, just as much as I want to call Malcolm selfish and he's obviously selfish I think that Marie is also selfish. And it's yes. because of these little minute moments that we know when we're in our relationships, you know when you make a choice to where you would rather be right than for there to be peace and for that person's well-being to be to be more important. You you know right. you know when you yeah. say things or when you bring up certain things that you are declaring war. Or you're yeah, absolutely. If, if nothing else, if nothing else, you're going to you're I have to challenge my mate right now. But whether maybe it's because you're tired of it, maybe it's because you're tired of making yourself small. You know, I'm not saying that yeah. that it's a, an abusive thing to do or a wrong thing to do to, to not be vocal about how you're feeling and and, mm-hmm. and letting, you know, where, where you stand be. But also, you know, just him calling her 60 different synonyms of crazy, basically, throughout the entire... Calling her unstable and all that stuff. Unstable. Like, cl- clearly, you're not being... You're not trying to resolve the situation. You're just right. constantly trying to intellectualize the situation so that you can be right. And and then yeah. on Ma- Marie's side, you're not trying to calm him down. You know, you know there, there's a lot of things... Mm-hmm. That you can do. You're a woman. There's there's one thing that you really can do to shut it all down. But you know, but it, you know this. You can yeah. shut down. You can come at me if if it wasn't so important for you to be heard. And I get it because I just didn't call your name. I, did, I just didn't thank you. And she's completely rectified. I I respect her emotions in this film completely because yeah, she's completely rectified but still you're not you're not looking for resolution either i don't think she was really looking she was trying to f with him you know she was she was right poking it, him there. i felt the same thing because even even at that part when she says it's not going to be productive let's talk about it later and then and then she goes you know he wants to know you can't listen in a relationship you can't tell somebody something you know how somebody used to be like, yo, I got something to tell you. And then you go, oh, what is it? And they were like, not right now, I'll tell you later. And now it's eating at you. You got to know. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> what are you going to tell me? Why, why would you tell me if right. you weren't going to tell me? Right, you right. know what I mean? They and, right and, over there at the bed and you like this, though. Yeah. It's like, it's like, well, you know, <laughs> well, you know, the, the whole, we need to talk. And now you're like, what did I, what? then your mind, like you're trying to figure out eight different things you've done. What did I do? Do we have to talk about what, what is it? Let's get, let's, your wheels are turning. Right. So right. now you, you won't push. Cause it's like, yo, what, what is it? I really want to know. Mm-hmm. And he, and I'm not saying he didn't want to know, but I think when he finally, when she told him what it was mm-hmm. and they had already kind of had the issue. And like he said, I apologize all night about it. You know, because he already knew. Yeah. But he really, he needs to hear it a, another way. He needs to say, you know, he needs her to say, okay, I understand and I accept your apology for it. I don't, you know, just don't let it happen again. He needs to hear those type of words. Mm-hmm. And when it, when she doesn't give him that and she goes, you know, it's like a bigger issue. Now it's like, oh, so now you're bringing up stuff that you ain't said to me yet. Right. So right. now there's more stuff that you... You know, and, and then and she's talking about like communication. He's like, well, why you ain't communicate that to me? You know, it's it, it's right. like a two way street. Yeah. yeah. She's right. She's very justified. Like you said, 
Mm-hmm. But she is selfish in that way because I think she likes to poke him. She likes to see <laughs> him <laughs> yeah. do the performance and the, you know, it, it's it's a rush. Because right. think about it. And I didn't, I just thought about this. She is, she's a she's she was a drug addict, mm-hmm. right? Right. When you when and I've never been a drug addict, you know, I, I know people in my family. I, I got I know friends, you know, people I won't mention them, but I, I know the struggle they went through. Mm-hmm. And when you ask them, they're always chasing the high. <laughs> what the drug made them exactly. feel like exactly it's it's like a, a what do you call it um you know uh adrenaline you're, you know adrenaline junkie yeah right you know some people like confrontation because it makes them feel alive right, right they right. don't want peace because it makes them feel like well what am i and he even said that like you're scared that i'm with why am i with you mm-hmm. and and i guess she has to keep him at bay so she can justify the crazy i like this craziness and or whatnot but it was just beautiful because it was like it's so if you're a therapist <laughs> you can you can go through this movie and just write like pcp plans man it's just like <laughs> <laughs> exactly and you know and my, my wife is a therapist too i can't wait for her to oh, watch yeah. this movie she didn't have time to watch it this week but i can't wait for her to watch it <clears throat> she's gonna, she's gonna see have like yeah she's gonna have like person centered plans everywhere <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> And Malcolm's problem was <laughs> I'm gonna walk in the house, it's gonna be like a beautiful mind, just like papers all over the wall. Papers, it's like, honey, what are you doing? I said, watch Malcolm and Marie. I have to oh, get this out. Okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah, I get yeah. It. No, it's and you know, you uh bringing up her drug addiction. I think a lot of relationships, a lot of people, and I'm not saying that you're doomed to do this. Some people can grow out of it. I think a lot of times people do get addicted to the highs and lows of relationships because they never develop coping mechanisms. They never they never develop safe places to express their feelings and, and see feelings all the way out. So all they think of relationships is just this constant back and forth. And when it's not happening, when the stability is there... They're, they're like, there's nothing else to do here, right? You know, they just... Right, because that's all they knew. Right, right, you know? That's all they so, knew. And so it's, and th- this relationship, it, it harkens very much to that. I, it, as, as smart as as they both are, they're, they're both very mm-hmm. s- smart. I think this is just a classic example of just two broken people. Uh, y- y- you know, a lot of our industry is it attracts people that need that that hole that bottomless hole filled up with uh flowers and adoration and i think that both of them in a lot of way uh um show those things and none nothing shows that better than her dropping that bomb asking why he did not at, uh, cast her in the film yes and, and, and i have felt her so much I, one yes. one part of me was like oh dang she's been holding great on question. that for a grip <laughs> she's been holding on that for a grip i'm like dang why didn't you bro i'm like uh, yeah i can see yeah. you co-signing in the co- yeah why didn't you dog why didn't you malcolm what's up <laughs> yeah you're looking at the tv screen like yo answer the question malcolm right yeah <laughs> answer the question I mean, but he's but he's so right, and we we've, we've probably I'm, I know you can testify to this where people, for lack of a better term, they want to be given something. I you know, I you know we're blessed. We know a lot of awesome people, right? Like you know you you got pictures with Matthew McConaughey. You worked with Jeff Nichols and all the best of the best, and you know the I don't Ruth I, and Joel, yeah. right? Yeah, you know the list goes on and on. Like we we know people, but. I'm not. Am I gonna call Will and be like, Will, uh, make me a movie? Like, you, you know, it doesn't work like that. It's it it's, work it, like it's, that. it's. I'm a filmmaker. I'm working on a film, or, or you're an actor. You're working on acting. Oh my God, Will, bro, I just wrote this script. Check it out, bro. And then you check it out. You like, yo, check this out. Look, look. What if I did this? Look, what if, what if, what if you did that? You look up and we're building and we're working on the film. You're, you know, all what auditions are coming up, man. You know, or oh, you know this casting director. Oh, that agent knows your. You know, these things organically happen when you are a part of the process and a part of the filmmaking. And you could tell that 
he loves the process. Yes. He, he, he even, she talks about how he treats the crew better than he treats, you know, people close to him. She did say that. Which I got to watch. I love that. When she said that, I was like, ooh, I got to make sure. I got to look, because I know how I can bend over backwards for anybody on set. I got to make sure I'm doing that for my loved ones, right? Like that. At home. Right, yeah. So that, that kind of, I was like, hold on, I got to make sure I'm doing that, right? But, you but, check but, yourself. All right, you know, you know, but but you but he clearly loves the process, and that's what got him there. That you know, I like to believe that's what gets you to those magnum opuses, those those awesome moments. But she clearly wasn't putting in work as an actress. So right. and, 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 she, and and go ahead. And she had the not to cut you off, but it, and she had the addiction part. Right. 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 And and, and you know just as well as. I know, and, and we're not in those scenes, but we know you're, the Hollywood scene. I'm not. I don't want to paint a bad picture, but for years, you know, people get in it, they get big, mm-hmm. they get money, mm-hmm. they go to parties, they start falling into those traps. Right. Right. The the tropes of Hollywood. You start falling into those old tropes of Hollywood, and it's like, and that's why it's so cliche mm-hmm. when you think about like the drug addiction and then and but when you when you think outside of the box and then just focus what she was saying yeah you do go you know why why didn't you put her in the movie but then maybe it was his thing of if i put you in the movie Mm -hmm. could you handle Mm -hmm. right everything is going to come with the success that you'll have i don't want to lose you again Mm -hmm. to a lifestyle now i'm here to anchor you right you know what I mean? I can be here to anchor you, but at the same time, I can't be with you all all the time. Mm-hmm. You, you're doing press, you're getting more movies. You're not going to always be doing my movies. Right. If you yeah. become a big star. Right. Right. You're going to go off and do some other people's movies. I have, I, I can't control, not that he has to control her, but I can't, you know, be with you in those moments. Well, How it's not because she's a woman, it's because of the fact that she's an addict, the, that you're worried she, about controlling. Addict, not a woman, exactly. Right. It's not it's not being the woman, right. it's being the addict. Right. And and I think people, you know, I think people missed a lot of things in that because it's like, when you start breaking it down, just in, in your mind and you go, because even when she said that, I, even like, you, like you said, we, we kind of looked at Malcolm like, yo, yeah, you could have. But then I had to even dial back thinking about it. And I go, well, what would have happened if she was the person in the film? What would have happened? Mm-hmm. Because the film obviously is a big success. Right. You know, if she if she got a bad review, like, it, you know, he was ranting about the bad reviews, but he got a great review and he was ranting. Right. What if, what if she read something that triggered her? Right, right. And then got back. Her performance to wasn't. Yeah, her performance wasn't authentic. And she's like, well, wait a minute, I lived this shit. What you mean my performance ain't authentic? Yeah. Now she's hitting the bottle again. Now she's got a coat. Right, right. So it's a very human element yeah. in that film because there's so many things that they only got what an hour and a half, two hours to, to do it. Right. But there's so many things like Jeff was saying, if you take off the right in front of you and you look at it for what it is, but then you go, ah, let me try to understand how they got to this night mm. and what everything means that they're saying. I think I think that's one of the elements people miss. It's like, well, what would have happened? Yeah, you would have had a great movie. Mm. Movie gets success, you get bigger. Bigger things come with success. You know, more uh, pressure become, you know, comes with success. Because she, she looked at him and said, I'm looking at the man, this was your night, and I'm looking at you, and this is the best, you're going to be the best version that you're going to get. Right. This is it. Yeah, that cut. This is you know, you have it. You have that. Mm-hmm. And I felt she was saying it to him because she couldn't say it to herself. Right. You know, yeah, this man. this ain't the best version of me. And even if I was on the screen, mm-hmm. that might have been the best version of me. But what is the best version of me? And would I be happy with that version? Because if I have everything, then I have access to everything. Right. <laughs> exactly. you know? it's, it's like giving that, that little kid a Mercedes Benz. <clears throat> or or even if that like if that was again not to uh you know demean her even further but if that was his daughter 
right? I, I think, like, like I wouldn't, I think about the, the kids' actors that I've worked with, and I'm just, mm-hmm. man, like, kudos to the parents, right? Because that is just, I couldn't imagine putting them in such a beast that I know that Hollywood can be. And it, I'm sure that's the, that, that is a part of a way that you can look at Malcolm looking at it as I'm protecting her. Cause I don't, I know her and I don't believe that she can, has the, the fortitude to be able to deal with this particular form of success right now. Right. But, because, because she had, she had the skills. Skills. Remember when she performed she, to him? That was a that was a dope performance. That was like one of my favorite parts of the movie, man. Yeah. When she did that, I was like, because she messed me up. I was like, yo, you're acting in a movie about acting, but you're act. I said, damn, you're, 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 levels you're, levels you win. Levels. Yes. But you, you know what else I just thought about just in this conversation about it? Even what I said about him, like with, with, with Malcolm being protective, maybe, maybe subconsciously he's being protective of her mm. in that way. But then is he right to do that? Or could you call him selfish in doing that? Because now you don't trust her enough right. to make that decision. Like right. give her the chance right. to mess it up or give right. her the chance. And I think when you couple all of those things together, it's like, oh, I get it. I get the heated discussion. I get it because so many truths were bought, brought out in his life and in her life. Like their egos are bruised mm-hmm. to a degree right. because you got to hold up the mirror now. You know what I mean? She's like, she, you know, what, what, what does she say? Without me, would the movie be good? Without the insight, without right. you knowing me, could right. you have written that on your own? Mm-hmm. And he had to think, he had to, he had to go. And he, and you remember, he didn't even say anything. And that right. was beautiful. Because right. you could read it, and you it was like self doubt. Could I have? Mm. Could I, ooh, you're and he's yeah. like, you're right. But damn, how dare you say that? And then I, she's saying it to her him because she's like, how dare you say this? Exactly. Stuff about me. Right. That's why he and you saw him ask if he was mediocre. That's all he cared about, right? You know, he's like, oh, he I'm not really the mediocre, moment. am I? Right. After all the things she said, you might lose me. You might do this. She heard him where his ego was lying, right? So right. his ego lays in because he's been working on his craft so long, mm-hmm. and we all are guilty of it. Even, even like, look, like if I came home and I did a and, 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 and it was a movie, and, and my wife goes, eh. <laughs> what, what, do you, "What do you? What do you? What do you mean?" Uh. Well, I mean, you, you were okay like that. It would hurt. Especially yeah. coming from the person, you know. That would hurt, <laughs> bro. That would hurt, no. Yeah. You'd be, you be in, in bed in the fetal, bro, like this. <laughs> you turned around, you're like, you're like huh, babe? Huh? <laughs> right. And, so, it, and, and like you, you know, if you, if you came home and you made this masterpiece film, mm-hmm. and you, you you went to Cannes and, and you know, the, the, the festival and, and everybody's like, oh, Trey. And then she's like, well, it was okay. You don't, you don't care about nobody else's yeah, opinion man. at that point. Yeah, man. And, you see? And, and also, I think that because because that person knows you so much with Zendaya, with Marie and her, and she knew what she was doing when she did this. And I think it has a percentage of truth in it in that, if he is this privileged black guy that really just milks the black guy, the dark skin black guy that's a minority and <clears throat> and is, you know, angry and distraught by this country and he kind of milks that whole thing, but he actually does not tap into uh you you can intellectualize and get better at your craft, but I feel like the more that I learn more and more as a storyteller and as an artist is you always have to have a uh, uh, a very um, like an exposed nerve. You you really you, yeah. you have to be brave enough to feel your emotions and to feel the zeitgeist of yeah. your your friends and your family and everything that's happening around you. And I think a lot of times you. Uh, you can lose sight of that. And I think that Malcolm is one of those people. And sometimes you can write, you you write yourselves into these scary corners because you're out of touch with 
with life and you don't have a story to tell because you haven't been going through anything and you haven't been feeling with people. You've just been kind of, you just, you, you have this ego and you want to get better than everybody and prove to everybody. And sometimes it, it takes somebody else's story for you to mm -hmm. intellectualize and make into this and you to use all of your talents to make this great thing. But for her in that moment to be like, but you though, like this movie is dope, but you though? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it, it's like, it's yeah. like the movie is dope because you, what you had to draw from to get it. Right. It was like you were handed. Right. It, you know, it's like in, in football or basketball. Like the the team may win the the, the championship, right? Uh, but but then you you know you was the you kicker. kicker. You were the coach of that team, <laughs> right? Right. And and then they say, man, this you know the Bulls they were so great. They had Michael and Scotty and Dennis. And then they look at Phil, and, and and then you know it's like when they talk about the greatest coaches, and I'm just using him as like a, a you know you know uh, an example. But they'll go, but it. Are you really a genius, Phil Jackson, or did you have the greatest basketball players of all time on your team? So it it, it then becomes that. Right. right. You know, and, and then because I've seen even in sports, I've seen that bruise some coaches' egos too. Yeah, yeah. Um, you see right now with Tom Brady winning without Belichick. Now you know Belichick's Belichick gonna get that right. heat now. So, so you know Belichick's ego right now was kind of like, you know, because he you know, he could stand on that leg. Right. You know, he times number one without me. Right. He never won without me. Mm. Well, hey, yo, Tom just won. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So, <laughs> so was it was it you? Was it the system, or was it him? Right. You know. Mm -hmm. So those things, even even like in a, in a, in, the, in the Jay Z Dame that, and I'm just I'm all over the place right. with this one. No, but just that relationship. Same thing. Because it was like when you're Jay, you knew who you were and you know what you brought to the table. Right. With Dame, right. they were in that same boat, but it was like Jay's the, the talent. He's the, that, and then they started to split ways because their viewpoints changed. Right. How things, you know, because then, you know, he started talking reckless. Well, if you know, you leave me, I can make another one of you. Uh, right. Yeah. Can yeah, you? exactly. Yeah, man. And, and you know, I, I love that you, you're bringing it up in different forms and different relationships because I feel like I don't mean to say this in a tragic way, but nothing lasts. I think it's a great thing just as much as it's a, as it is a tragic thing. I, I, you know, the things that we love the most, the things that we hate the most, it's like these moments. It's these, you know, yeah. you know, Whitney Houston, I remember when she was doing an interview and she referred to the... Uh, um, the bodyguard years. There, were, they asked her about I will, I, I will, I will always love you, and she was like, "Oh, the bodyguard years." You know, we think of Whitney Houston as Whitney Houston, this big, huge career. But you think about her life. You know, everything changed with the with bodyguard. You know, that's when her life changed. And then there were day to day decisions, and there were other albums and all this other mm -hmm. stuff. But it's, but life is these moments. Some moments are memorable. Some moments are life changing. Some moments go by at the blink of an eye. <clears throat> but, uh, I think about, again, going off on more tangents. Or, or this has everything to do with Malcolm and Marie guys, please. Yeah, I, absolutely. Please we're we're, we're segueing. <laughs> <all the way. laughs> we're we're going to bring it back. All right. You know, the Jackson five, Jackson Jack, yeah. 5 is probably the best boy band of all time. If you, if you talk about it time per time, I'm sure, you know, NSYNC and them have made, sold more and all that. But if you're talking about era for era, Jackson 5 is probably the best boy band of all time. And you do not, when you address the, um, the Tito Jacksons, you don't, and the Jessies, you don't address them as the members of the greatest boy band ever. You address them as... As Michael's brother. Michael's brothers. Because that was I just a moment. moment. That was just a moment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But Michael Jackson is an icon. He he is several moments, right? He's, he, right. You're right? And so bringing it back to Malcolm and Marie, their relationship is what we're witnessing here what this 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 is a moment 
within a relationship, right? And yeah. this in this moment, Malcolm has just made this incredible film. But they are who they are. They're, they are who they were ye- t- yesterday and tomorrow. When, after the dust settles, you know, and the red Ready carpet soon. and all that, they're going to be these individuals. And I, one of my favorite uh, shots in this film is when they're in that, sitting on that bed in the bedroom and the desolate grass in the window is behind them. <sighs> I, I love that because, and especially when they do it, because they do it when the other one is like grilling them, like just digging in their soul. Yeah. And then they're just sitting there and the desolate grass is behind them. And I think that that is who we are watching right now. We're watching these this this sort of empty souls, these these that are, are insatiably filling their the who they are with these moments of frustration and these moments of anger and I and I felt like, like you know so as like the other one is just ramming into them you know off the screen you're just sitting there and it, they feel like they're all alone in this frame right and it's just outside of the frame of the door so it's you know you feel like they're in there by themselves with this desolate grass behind them only to at the very end for them to both be out there in the desolate grass yeah. together. In the desolate grass. Together. together. That's and you what know what it is. And you know what's funny? Mm-hmm. When you even, because I, I, I thought about that when I saw it, because I, you, we're, you know, we have those minds, you, the whole, yeah, the whole, why did they shoot it at this angle? Why did they? Right. And I thought about it when they were in the field, because a lot of people were like, man, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. And when I thought about, because they, they, they framed that window with the grass out there a, lot, a couple times. Right. Mm-hmm. Even when they were going to sleep, one was turned the other way and things. Mm-hmm. And I thought when they woke up, it was like, and, and maybe I'm reaching, but you know how they say the grass isn't always greener ah, on, the other, on the other side. You know, somebody like might, that. but they were out there together, right? It wasn't just the one person. It wasn't right. just the, you know, right. whatever. Uh, and, and I think that they, they're going to, they, they have to sit in that. Right. They knew they know what that argument is. Like you said, they're they're both who they are. Right. Right. I think they truly, really believe in each other. I think they push each, I think they push each other's buttons. And I think they get the best out of each other when they do that. Right. right. And I think, you know, sometimes the worst comes out. Um, you know, I I just think they almost feel like they need each other. Definitely. It's one, it's like a dependent, codependent type of relationship. Exactly. You know, yeah. yeah. And 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 I think once they got to that truth of it, maybe that was something they didn't really want to say. You know, maybe they maybe it was like a fairy tale, you know, I'm with you because I love you. And you know, yeah, you love her, but you also depend on her for, you know, to tell you when you're being an asshole, to, to give you material, to to get you through your day to day. Cause I'm pretty sure she does a lot of things for him. Right. And I'm pretty sure he does a lot of things for her, but you never you never got that. They never said it. But you you felt it within the within the movie. You know what I mean? Like day to day life. I think they they absolutely need each other. Definitely. In that regard. And that's definitely. what that's what made it interesting to me. Yeah, it's definitely a, a codependent, uh probably slightly unhealthy situation unhealthy. going on there. It, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's you know, hold on, because I'm um I gotta set my recorder back up. My recorder died. Okay. All right, we're back. <clears throat> Got to slate myself all the time. But but I think that, you know, it's the difference between, you know, when how you need your vegetables and you need your vitamins versus <laughs> I need that fifth. You know, or I need that, that, that cigarette before I go to bed. Or right. I need right. that apple pie, right? Those are two different needs that we yeah. tell ourselves. And... I, I think that, especially when we're dating, I feel like we kind of switch in and out of those types of relationships with people. And I don't mm-hmm. I don't know if they can graduate to that that uh, hearty meal it, it, uh, relationship. Yeah. It, it feels like right now they're more each other's kind of vice than that, that you know, that, that real fix to really help them become better individuals. But, mm-hmm. I mean... But, I mean, we... Yeah. We we see we see it all day too. I mean, look, I, I, not in anybody's business, but 
you on social media, you see people, you 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 see some girl talk about her man, how low down he is, or whatever. On one post, two hours later, she's got pictures of him and they love you, W. So it's you know what I mean. It's like this back and forth. It's 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 almost like the uh, the excitement mm-hmm. of everything, and that's what I was going with the with the you know being that addict, have that having that addiction mind, having that I need adrenaline. Right. You know, there's certain right. ways you can poke at it. And she, and she was very clever at it. Yeah, and I think yeah. he needs some of that, too. She's very clever. I think. Mm-hmm. And one thing I want to speak to, even just off the relationship aspect of it, just and, and I'm just purely for the film itself, for the actors, I wanted to say, um, I think she I think she did a tremendous job. Mm-hmm. in that um i was reading and, and another thing the reason why i'm i wanted to do this because I, I kept reading people's comments on certain blog you know things you social media and people were either they were with the movie or they were like i'm triggered or they were just off the movie mm-hmm. and i really wanted to get mm-hmm. to the heart of like well what why are people off the like i want to know like what right. made it not good mm-hmm. and and one of the key things they kept saying, which to me was very surface, was kind of like a, a shallow type of, and I'm not calling these people stupid. I'm not saying that they're not intelligent, but what I'm, I think if you, if your answer to something is, I just, I, don't, I didn't like her with him in the movie, or she just didn't, she didn't, she didn't look like the part, or she didn't, you know, she was, she was yeah. too young looking. Right, right, right. Yeah, right, right. That, well, you too bad because you you kind of missed one of the one of the best performances of the year yeah man. you know it, in my humble opinion it wasn't they, distracting. You know, they were, I, I know sometimes some casting can be distracting that that yeah that's unfortunate you yeah know? It, it can be distracting sure mm-hmm. some casting can be distracting and some casting can be distracting to the point of you put you put somebody that's so well known or like so mm-hmm. you can only see them in like I, I couldn't, even though Felicia Rashad is a master actress. Right. I couldn't, you know, you take her outside of the wholesomeness right, of what she's always played. It might be a little harder, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it might be a little hard to see it, and, and but she might give one of the best performances. But I, you know, I, I could see, but I just can't. I don't want to see Claire Huxtable. Right. I, I get it. Breaking Bad. But, you know, when Claire Huxtable Huxtable Breaking, breaking Bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, and then, and but, but they were, they were talking about, and I don't know if you've seen any of their comments, but they were like the age gap between John Damon and Zendaya. And I was like, well, do you know how many age gaps there has been mm-hmm. between most women in Hollywood and the men? Because right. it's last like the I director checked, actor, actor relationships, right? You, you see what I'm saying? And, and even with the act, like, you know, just as well as I know, if you're a man in this business, you can, you can be someone's love interest to the day you die. I mean, look, Sean Connery. Right. Yeah. Wasn't he a love interest of Catherine Zeta Jones at the yeah. time? I think Catherine was like what thirty. Oh, Michael, Michael Douglas. Oh, Michael Douglas. Yes. Or, or yeah. those they're guys. still married. I, I think, think they're, they're still married. married. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And it's to me, it was like, are are we? Are, 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 because it, it's the elephant in the room half the time, and I and, and no, I don't want I'm no backlash to me or you, mm-hmm. but I just wanted to bring it, and it was a lot of the negativity mm-hmm. was coming from our own community, yeah, as you know, in, in the black community, even in, in you know people in the business, and I won't say who they are, or whatever, but yeah. it was coming from a place of like every film that stars a black person doesn't have to be political. Every film that stars <laughs> two black people that are supposed to be in a relationship doesn't have to turn out lovely. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what, so, and I've heard, and even with the comments, they kept saying, you know, black people aren't a monolith. Well, this is indicative of that. It's a perfect example. Right. It's a perfect example. Right. right. And, and now, Sam, what would have been whack is if Sam being a white writer tried to treat us with kid gloves and only give us one part of being a human right a human right he he allowed these for all of the criticism and for all of the things in the industry that, that you know people of color are fighting for mm-hmm. you know inclusiveness and better roles and and, and things mm-hmm. well we should we should thank sam levinson and, and Zendaya and John Wash, John David and and Kathy and, and Will and all these these people who put it together because right. you just showed that you could have this story with two black leads and it be as 
non-cliche, right? Right. It was just two human beings. Like you said, anybody could have played these roles. He chose to go with these people. Right. He didn't do that to, you know, to, to pony us up and parade us. I don't right. think so. I don't know him. Right. But he seems, he, he seems authentic enough to say, I just wanted to make this movie. I, I, me and Zendaya were, were writing on it. Mm-hmm. And I just felt that the comments, man, just social media can be such a, um, they, they kept using the word toxic for the movie. I didn't think the movie was toxic. I think some of the, I think some of the, the commentary about the movie has been toxic. Right. You know, yeah. about, yeah, man. about it's, Zendaya. It's unfair. I agree, man. It was. It, I agree. I think that we're just so used to fighting. It's Black History Month, so I just finished doing a, a <laughs> night in, in Miami, Miami, and I'm going to be doing Judas. Uh, and so I've been, I've been knee deep in a lot of uh, of Black History the past uh, couple of months, just to keep myself sharp for these episodes. Right. And I, it's it's so fascinating, just because. You know, uh, I always did you see a night in Miami? Oh yeah, come on, yeah, or, yeah. Uh, of course you did. It's like Sam. Hey, look, look, go ahead. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I, I just 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 because there's a six degrees of separation. Wow. I actually I, uh, they called me in the read for two of the roles. Okay. In the film, of course, of course, Cassius and and and, and Malcolm. Nice. Um, <laughs> I saw it, and I'm confident in my ability. Right. But I just want to get it. I just want to get a boy, uh, 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 Ben Adair, oh who played God. who played Malcolm. And oh. I know people, you know, they people, you know, with the with the British actors and things of that nature. You know, we all have those opinions of whatever. But look, let me let me listen. Same thing with Judas. They're saying up with um, with, with Daniel. Daniel. With Daniel, he's a beast. Yeah, he's. A, I'm all, all the best man gets the job. We're an entire diaspora that had to deal with this transatlantic slave trade. It's, it wasn't just yeah. us, but, but anyway. Right. And, and here's the other thing. <laughs> Let me just say this to the industry, if y'all watching. Right. You don't don't hate on the British brothers and sisters. If if anything, you can hate maybe on the industry for you know for pushing in that direction. Not not saying it's a bad thing, right, right, right. but that's who you should aim the dis the displeasures with. This. Mm-hmm. Not not them. They, they, I, I can't hire me. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, you, you, exactly. you know, what I, mean? I can't hire me unless right. it's my movie. Right. Um, but but just to say, one night Miami, I saw that, and and Kingsley been there. Mm. The, the way he ripped Malcolm, listen, and and I'm confident in myself to to do a great job. Right. When I saw it, I was like, yeah, y'all y'all made the right. The, that was he. He was it. That was a great Malcolm for that movie, man. And I, I mean, because because Denzel was great to for to show us that Malcolm at that time. But for us to see this Malcolm at this time, woo! That I mean, all of them. What was so per- well casted? Very well casted. Yeah. And, and 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 kudos to Leslie Odom Jr. Uh, Sam Cook, man, he killed that. Yes. And my boy yes. Aldous Hodge. Oh another, my God! Yeah, man, North he Carolinian. worked with Alano. He worked with Alano on Underground. On Underground, I worked with Aldis on uh, AMC Turn. And oh, uh, oh cool. And, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right. he, he's a, he's a fellow North Carolinian, you know. Um, but yeah, kudos to them guys, man. They killed that. Regina, yeah, did, yeah. they killed that. Yeah. That's dope. No, I I feel you. So we we went so many different places, but I'm I'll boil it down to. You, with Malcolm and and Marie, they, I they, I remember with loving uh, Martone who played the um, Martone the French actor. He he was like, like in the oh, you played the sheriff. Yes, he played the sheriff. And, and I, I remember, <laughs> yo, he smoked that role, man. And I remember after his scenes, they were so chilling. And and I will remember walk uh, um, uh, walking up to him afterwards and just being like, man, it's like, like I you have been the friendliest, nicest guy. Like that's all I see of you all day. And then to see these roles, I see you pull off this role, bro. It's like for that split second, I don't like you, bro. I don't like you. He like you at all. <laughs> he just started laughing. He was like, thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, you were my craft services. You right. might craft like, man, I should smack you. Right. <laughs> Someone get this PA, please. Tell him to go make a coffee and be quiet. No, Martone was the nicest all of you guys were. But and and but the only reason why I'm bringing that up is because 
Martone was allowed to play this character, this Southern sheriff, racist sheriff, Mm -hmm. and I love that movie. You know, we that movie was great, and but I did not like that character. I I despise that character, and I feel the same way, honestly, with Malcolm and Marie. I don't think that. I would probably get a lot of advice from Malcolm because he's done something that I've wanted to do. As a filmmaker. Right, as a filmmaker, but I don't like either one of them. And, but that, uh, but that's but that's dope. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yes. I, I was just talking to somebody about Joe Rogan, the Joe Rogan podcast, because oh, yeah. they were saying, like, oh, are you worried about talking so much on your podcast that, like, people will not like you? You know, people aren't going to always like you. And, uh, you know, he's like, you know, you know, like Joe Rogan, he's always saying all this stupid stuff. Like for at first people liked them. Now people don't. And I was just like, that's interesting. I was like, I, I don't really get that. I was just like, what I get is that that he's an individual. And mm-hmm. since he's a person and he's not a God, that there's sometimes I'm going to mm-hmm. disagree with him. It, you know, and 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 and, and, and uh, all of this is just different examples of just allowing people to be the full percentage of what it is to be a human. And in order for us as Black Americans to be normalized, that there, there was this book. There's this book that I or this article. This British guy, I think his name is Dwyer. Um, he talks about the white supremacy coming from the UK. This gay. Mm-hmm. This gay. Um, a uh, journalist from the UK, and he was just saying how uh, it's the normalizing. It's not the demonizing of black people. It's the it's the normalizing of white that is so damaging. And and to and th- th- uh, to movies like this do normalize us being everything. They normalize yeah. us, and that that's why the, to me that that's what's so important for this movie to be out. Right, right, and and, and just to pick, and, and I'm glad you said that. Because somebody brought up an interesting point in those comments about normalization, right? And and because someone made the statement, I don't know any black people who act like this or argue like this. And the guy says, I could tell you ten couples right now who live in NoHo in North Hollywood that act just like this, right. and they're all black. And right. he said the problem is, like you said, it's these they they got the play realized, fully rounded people mm-hmm. with problems. Right. With issues, right. not just black people, mm-hmm. people, right. and that's that's important. I think for you, like you said, as a filmmaker, as an actor, even, I heard Mahershala Ali say it. Mm-hmm. He said it's so funny now that he gets to play these people who are who are a well-rounded person. Right. It goes from on the on the interview circuit or on the red carpets. He said back then when I used to play a person, I, I played like the, you know, the guy, the anti-white guy, the guy who all of these things like and, and I'm grateful. Mm-hmm. But he said now he said then all they would ask me about was how do you feel about diversity in Hollywood? How do you feel about the the black, the, the black, the, the black? The, 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 and he said at, at a point. You, you put all this work into being an actor. You put all of this work into being, bringing a person to life, mm. but they mm-hmm. never ask you about how you prepared to become that right. person. Yes, which, which, you worked, worked, which you worked, worked at, which you worked at, right? Which you worked at. Yeah. It, everything was surface. It stopped here. Mm-hmm. Right. And he was like, and he was like, now you know, with Green Book and and all that success, what he you know get one Oscar. So he's like, now you know, people they come up. You know, it's a different world. They want to ask about those things. And and, uh, and I think he was talking to John David Washington. I think it was an episode on Actors on Actors. Cool. They were talking about that. And uh, and and I remember him saying that. And, and it made me go, that's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's yeah. very interesting yeah. because you just asked me about one of my characters on Sergio about like, how did I craft him? Mm-hmm. How did I come up with that? Right. You know? Right. And that's, and that's a great thing. I don't, you know, and with Malcolm and Marie, Mm-hmm. It goes back to that. It's like now when when I do see the interviews with John David and with Zendaya, that asking people are asking, how did you craft that person? Right. It, right. It's no longer black love, and you know it just it, it doesn't just stop here right. on the surface. Right. It's and like I, I think, think ask you, oh, 
Uh, how does it feel like being one of the black people on the set of Sergio? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it, it, you know, I was playing a, I was playing a person, right? And right. um, but I think that's what makes the movie dope. I think that's why I wanted to advocate for it because I saw so much vitriol and 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 and, and spewing of of that narrative mm. towards Sam. Of course, you know, I guess I guess now white writers can't write for, for black people or or mm. black people shouldn't write. I, I don't know. I, right. if, if you're a writer, I don't give a I don't give a shit what color right, you are, man. That's what I'm. That's what you I know? mean. I, I, it, and I feel you. Where it's like you, you know, we don't want to get backlash for stuff that we say, but all, that I feel you. Where all it is is just that I would love for us to very uh, poignantly aim the ires at the right thing. The the, 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 the struggle right is real. real. The struggle is real, and we don't have time to BS it, 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 if it's not there. Like, it's just, there's nothing to shoot at here. I'm sorry. There's nothing to shoot yeah. at. You know, like, these are, like, the, the executive producer. I mean, Kid Cudi was an executive producer. I mean, come on. Like, there's, there, we're, we're doing stuff, man. We're, like, you know, A Night in Miami, Regina King. Uh, uh, Shaka King just came out, the, you know, with Judas. And, and, you oh, know, and, and, uh, Eugene, Eugene, or was the Ash for uh, Eugene for Sylvie's Love and and, uh, oh, yes, and exactly. all those, so you know, so all much, of those movies. Ryan Coogler, so much. I'm working right tomorrow. I'm working on um, they clone Tyrone, the the writer for Creed two. He's doing this Jamie Foxx, John Boyega movie. It's, and yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. inspiring. This is like a 31 year old dreaded dude, you know, just out there directing films, and I'm like. Is this? I mean, we can talk about the 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 hurdles that we gotta, you know, jump. I'm not saying that racism is over now and we're good, right? But, but let's let's just really be focused on you know where we are going. What it is. Yeah, you know, because the crap. It, there's no time. You know, there's no, you know, the, the, we can't waste energy. Like let let's you know point it the right way, man. <clears throat> I'm glad you said that too. And I know, I know we're going to end here in a moment, but I'm glad you said that because even with you, like, even if I, and I know this is going to come, I know we're going to do some stuff together. I know it. I just, I know that we, we've talked about it, yeah. but it's like, even, even with watching uh, 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 Sam and, and, and John David and Zendaya, they got together they poured their resources and they just said, let's make something. Right. So they didn't, they weren't talking about, why ain't this or why ain't that or why can't the they just say yo let's just fucking make it this is it this is and it. I think that's what's I think that's where we are mm -hmm. and I think just like you said instead of always like moaning and complaining about why this or you know that I heard Denzel say it if if you want those roles maybe somebody should write them for write them right and then right. just do it. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I think that's the thing. I think they just gave a perfect example of if I want to see, I'm going to make something that I want to see. This is the story I want to tell. Right. And it, that nobody else matters. This is the story I want to tell. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you, you know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. This is it. Yeah, man. This is it. <clears throat> Did you see the little things? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Jared awesome. Little. Oh, my God. Right? The, Jared Little was so good. Oh. He, you know what it is, kind of like Malcolm and Marie. He's so good it makes me uncomfortable <laughs> at times because I, I believe I'm like I think Jared Leto got bodies. Son, no, nah, nah, he he got clones. You know they said that he was on set. I listened to the DGA podcast and they said that he would just walk up to strangers. And people didn't know who he was. You, you you saw that he was just, it's not like he had prosthetics on. He was like, he would just walk up to people and just, and people would get super weirded out. Like, he'd just be like, oh, hey, how's it going, guys? What what you guys doing over here? You see, you see this movie? Move. Uh, you see this, this movie over here we're shooting? And they're like, <laughs> yeah, man. In the way he was walking with the belly and the gait that he right. had when he was walking. He just had a six pack like a year ago, bro. <laughs> right. And, and just the way he was, I mean, he looked like he's stanky. He looked like he smelled like bologna. I, you, and, and he, <laughs> I just believed him. And uh, and that's what I'm saying, man. That movie, Little Things, Malcolm and Marie, I, and if you're a filmmaker, you're an actor. Yeah. You These movies, I think, will inspire you for craft. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of times, you know, especially, you know, here in the, in the U.S. I, or anywhere, I think we can get bogged down with like social media and, and, and wanting to do things for, you know, for likes and things. But if you're really serious about it, you should watch these movies, you know, just yeah, for the man. craftsmanship yeah. of 
of even watching Malcolm and Marie, one of my thoughts was as an actor, mm. the movie scared me as an actor in the point of, could I have pulled that off? Right, right. It was, it was one of those aspects like, could I, you know, it was challenging. It's like, damn, could I have pulled off a, a two hour movie, two people, sh- strong dialogue? How would that have looked? Could I have done that? Mm. And that's why I said kudos to them because yeah, they did you know, it. They did it, you know, as a yeah. as a director, one house, two people, you know, challenge. It's like, could I have done that? Yeah, man. Keep everybody's attention, keep it captivating, of course. And those are two very character driven films, very actor very. performance driven films. And that's what I really liked about the little things that they just zeroed in on those three juggernauts. They said, look, we, we've done, we know that you guys have heard of crime stories before. So we're just going to get the hell out of the way and like watch Denzel. All right. Now watch my man, um, Jared. All right. Now watch my man. What's, um, from the, uh, Rami Malek. yes, Rami. Yeah, man. Like, and him and Denzel, um, I was just so captive captivated by him and i love um i thought that he just had an overbite for bohemian rhapsody but i guess he naturally has one he naturally has it and 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 it's so uh it's so mesmerizing it's such a different attractiveness i I always say that uh, you can be attractive but if you have a unique attractiveness and and that's what i I love i could stare at him for days because he's already an attractive man but he it's almost like this like uh like the duck face that a woman does almost right it's just this very regal just it's a natural yeah thing yeah it's funny you say that too because uh jeff said something uh, about michael shannon right said something about michael shannon and Uh and you know we work with mike and uh, and one of the nicest guys too. But uh, he's somebody asked him. They were like, you know, what makes Michael Shannon Michael Shannon? Mm-hmm. And he and he he's, Jeff says, look, outside of the fact that he's one of the, in my opinion, top ten, top five actors in the world, mm-hmm. he said he's just so damn interesting to look at. Right. He was like, I could point the camera mm-hmm. at Michael. He doesn't have to say anything, but his face, the way he, it just tells a story. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. That's same. So with, true. Same with like Willem Dafoe. Those type of that, right, right. that look. Of course, Whitaker, Benicio right. del Toro. You know, right. it, yes, it, yes. it tells a look. Uh-huh. You know, it's, it, yes. you just it's something about that person that just goes. It's a story behind. Me. Yeah, I could just stare at them. Like I could just watch them for for hours, right? But yeah, super super character driven films. Thanks for rotting with us, guys. I don't. If you have, I know you got kids and a family, and you got stuff going on. I uh, I know we're nearing two hours, but I'm I'm having a great time. I I have I'm just, I just keep going through the movie and let let me know if if we're uh you know if we're getting past if you got to go cook dinner or something. All right. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm gonna break out of here in a couple minutes, but yeah, it's, yeah. It, this is um, mm-hmm. I, I really appreciate you having me on, man, because this is I, I could, you know, we could talk about this stuff for, for <laughs> exactly hours, exactly. man. This, this is exactly, what we do, it's what we love, and and I think that's the power of cinema, mm-hmm. you know, the exactly. cinema and and movies. They they create dialogue, they create discussions, um, they bring people together in in a commonality. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, just like this movie. And that's what I'll say, just to wrap it up in that regard, the commonality of uh, in the in the normalization just of a, of a real realized relationship. You know, everything is not roses and, you know, daffodils and you know, I love you. It's, it's not all that. And everything right. isn't always yelling and fussing, but this, this is a microcosm of right. a relationship in one night. And people, you know, I think if you go into it, realizing that going into the movie, it's going to be a a, a, a very much more enjoyable watch than you know just listening to everybody else in the in the (laughs) yeah in the the sphere sphere, right yeah man now that's beautiful and and i'll end it with just uh again when we're talking about these two broken individuals going going back to the music you know when she she starts playing dion warwick the, the get rid of him just start start the table. And like and and you know what that, like just those lyrics, you know those lyrics are just eh, 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 all oh, in the body, right? right? 
because he's like, hey, listen to this shit. Nah, nah, this nah, is, nah, 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 oh, I, I hate this song. song. I, I never like, like this song. song. <laughs> it's, it's almost like um my my wife has she has a song that she and she just loves the song. Uh, uh, and when we first started dating, it's um uh oh, oh shit, I need to call her in here and ask her what it is. It's a it's a Lauren Hill song. Uh, now I used to love him. Now I do. I, I can't yeah. think of it. Uh-huh. Of, of the now song. I you know, you're right. Yeah. The lyrics to that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So, uh-huh. so when, we, when we were younger and dating, and, and maybe, you know, maybe I got on the nerves or something like that, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, we were riding and that song comes on and she's like singing a little too much. And, and I, I start, I'm like, yo, I'm like, why? Why, why this song? Like, why you, why you got to do that? And, why are you and singing it, you know, it all was, loud? Why are you singing yeah, the beat yeah, yeah. part all loud? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you know, you, you ain't saying no song the whole ride. You're going to sing that shit. <laughs> yeah, why now? You know, you, know, sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, there's just the, some songs just, just, that's just it, right? That is just symbolizes everything that you're feeling. But, <clears throat> go, but talking about that song and then also... I really love towards the end where they fragment them a lot with the mirrors. Yes. And them kind of occupying the same space, but fragmented individuals. Individual relationship. You right. Yes. You that. Yes. 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 And that is that's, that's what, what I'll conclude with. That that, you know, outcast, liberation at the end, right? You yes. know? That liberation from the film. This, these sim this is this is cinema. This, like, thank you, Will Greenfield, Sam Livingston, Zendaya, yeah, Zendaya John Cutting, Washington, Cotton, John David. David. So, y'all, like, this is cinema. You guys, for a moment, just for a couple of hours, man, we got to watch this, these, this very intimate moment and really see ourselves in it. And and also and all and if you do want to bring in the element of color, I feel like. We're that much more rounded as, as yes. people. You, you, you know, uh, you, you were talking about Mahershala, and it's very sim- uh, this. You guys are almost uh, kindred spirits to me in that, like our relationships on set. Because uh, I work, or when I was working on House of Cards, M- Mahershala just walked up to me, and this is season two, so you know he he hasn't won anything. He, had, I think, the most he had done was you know uh, the biggest he had done at least was like Benjamin Button in House of Cards at that time, and right. he he had just casually walked up to me. And was I'm one of the black PAs, you know, and just just striking conversation with me. He asked me about my graphic novel all the way back then too, right? But <clears throat> I you're all the way back then, but I just I like watching. Uh, watching that uh, maturation because for him to be so approachable and him he he walked up to me for and for us to have built this and it wasn't just me it was all like, like it was everybody like every, yes it was everybody on set he was nice to everybody on set he took pictures with fans and and mothers and, and kids and he was all and, and to know that that is possible for us to to and and for for him like him getting that Oscar and him you telling me and listening to him talk about the options that he has like it is this this is the stuff like right right now you know I know there's COVID and there's everything else this, that we can talk about that's crazy but just as far as black cinema goes I just you know uh you know we just lost our brother Chadwick right you know uh, oh man you yeah. know we lost our king man but you know Black Panther said it off even back then when it did or even before then with blade or even even way back then with uh when spike lee and it, it spike lee and, and i and i gotta say this too uh-huh. uh with with the all black we we gotta give flowers to reggie hudlin and and, and uh, yes. uh eddie murphy with, with, yes. with Boomerang yes. and, and House, you know all of those things they went through uh, so much. The, the list goes on and on. I, I, and you, you know, we're, we're, if you start naming names, you're just gonna leave people out. It's all, it's, it's so unfair. But all of that is just to say is this that, that right now is that I really feel like this film, no matter who was the EP, the writer, whoever, it's this experience, this two hour experience that I feel like really symbolizes what's happening right now for us. And I hope that we all realize it as we're going about and making our movies and. T- and 
and because this is all of just about touching people and creating again this these two hours of honesty and I love that we're I love where the industry is right now in that and maybe I can be a little idealist because I'm on the outside in in so many ways but I'm encouraged by movies like this so yeah absolutely it's it's very encouraging uh to to us to to you know it, it, we're just talking about the people of color Right. You know, black yes. people, yes. Whether, whether you're across the pond or not, let me say that to these people, <laughs> whether you're from Africa, England, whoever, you, we all black, we all brothers, we all, even if you're white or who, I don't care who you are, right. you know, it's hard enough for, it's hard enough as, just to be an actor. Right. <laughs> right. It, you know, it's hard enough to just be in this business. Just let's, let's mm -hmm. keep it real. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think we, we should all, like you said, look at it as, as just a collective and go. If we're in this community, you're in the business, you go, damn, I hope, I pray, I want to will it into existence that I could make something that could touch. Like, like I think this movie touched, but I've been touched by a lot of movies, but I think this one just spoke to me for some, it was weird. It's just, a, it, it just hit me from an artistic standpoint, from a personal standpoint, from a the, the Hollywood standpoint. It just, it just was like, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm so inspired now, like you said, man. So yeah, man, kudos to you too, man, because I know you're going to make great uh, art going forward uh, like like this. You know, I just watched the, the one you, you sent me and, and it, you know, you, you everything is getting better every time and I just can't wait to get that script, you know what I'm saying? I just can't wait to get the script and, 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 uh, and we get everybody on board, man, so blessings no nah, man i'm i'm looking forward to it man progress feels the best and i i can't wait for us to be on set again and again and again uh and and we'll definitely bang out another episode we can do this for hours guys but we have will we already had two hours of will dalton's time all right this is you know this is you know there's there's bill gates time will dalton's time guys we just got <laughs> Some real priceless two hours here, y'all. I don't know if y'all know. I don't know if y'all know. <laughs> but, no, okay, man, man. but thank you so much, Will. It, it was great to catch up. Um, we, we'll, we'll have to do it again soon. Absolutely, man. Let's wrap soon. You you know, I'll hit you up, text to call you. Uh, but that, thank you for having me. That, it's been my pleasure to sit yeah. and, and talk with you, man. You're a good brother. Love you, man. And, uh, you know, hey, I'm always here, brother. Uh, thanks, my man. I love you, too. We'll talk soon, okay? I know that was Trey. Take so care, my brother. To the fam. Oh, absolutely. You too, man. Tell the wife. Let me take pictures when she do the case study. I gotta see that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I got this, <laughs> right, brother. Peace, brother. Peace, man. Find all our content on the newfilmosophy.com.